3047A. And Michael, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and give us the overview on that, and then we'll discuss it. Sure. Um, Chair Przewodniczący, members of the committee, you heard House Bill 3047A on May 12th. Um, this, what, this bill is what's being referred to as the doxing bill, and it creates a civil cause of action for the improper disclosure of certain private information, such as personal phone numbers, email addresses, and home addresses. In order to bring a claim, the person must prove that their information was knowingly and without consent disclosed with the intent that the victim be stalked, harassed, or injured, and that a reasonable person would have been so harmed. There is, emergent, there is an emergency clause on the bill, a minimal fiscal impact, and no revenue impact. Um, you also heard about dash, five amend, dash A5 amendments um, when you heard the bill. Um, however, those would not be ready to move today if you were interested. All right. Okay. Uh, so with that, I wanted to get that on the record. I, uh, I had received information uh, regarding the Dash 5 amendments, uh, and specifically, there is a assertion which I've not been able to validate or verify uh, that the intent of the original legislation that when the bill was being heard back in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was basically to be broader than what is currently uh, provided for in 3047A. And that information was, uh, I guess, coming from, uh, as I'm going to say, through the uh, League of Cities, uh, if I remember correctly, I think Mr. Winkles had reached out to the previous chair of that committee, who was uh, Commissioner Val Hoyle, uh, had the committee that that bill was in front of, and Aaron Seiler, who works also uh, for the Bureau, uh, was the committee administrator. So really, colleagues, I'm going to just ask uh, if anyone would like for us to get more information on uh, 3047A as to what the intent may have been at the time the bill was passed. And I do recognize and understand that clearly that is maybe a point of reference, but as we both are, as we all know, uh, whatever a previous legislature has done cannot bind a future legislature as to what we're doing. So I'm just going to open this up for a discussion, I guess, to see whether or not uh, anyone would like to have more information as to the premise of why the Dash 5s were brought forward uh, as to trying to, I guess, uh, maintain the intent of the bill when it was originally passed, or at this time, whether we uh, are ready to move without the Dash 5s being even in a position to consider, because the paperwork on that uh, amendment are, is not uh, available at this time. So it's, I'm opening the floor for anyone who might have questions and wants to go further. Senator Manning, you'll be first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On this particular bill, I know uh, last year, when we when we had, I was a member, a lot of us were the member of the Joint Transparency and Use of Force Reform. Uh, we were looking at this issue uh, with a, a, a specific scope. One is that do, is it permissible to allow personal information of a person to be spread out over wherever for the purposes of gathering mob like to go and visit their homes or personal uh, areas so where they have children they have family members things like that i uh i stood up in support of the bill as is and i think that uh you know well, as we are in view of everything that we experience COVID and, and and all these other things uh i would only support the bill as is all right other questions and comments uh, i before maybe i take another and senator thatcher i see you got your hand up but let, let me ask uh michael one other point on the dash fives if if we actually considered them uh for uh, adoption what would the dash fives do to the bill as is? Chair, my understanding is that the um, 
that the amendments are in a would are basically an addition to the underlying bill. They don't they don't impact the underlying bill um, per se. They are just uh, kind of an additional uh, tack on. It's, so it's my understanding is that the uh, it would allow for other individuals who are employed by governmental uh, units uh, that may not be engaged in, I'm going to say public safety, I may be uh, misspeaking at that point, uh, from their information being uh, available. Is that a fair assessment, Senator Lips, yeah. I'll to you? Chair, Chair, I think it I think it extends beyond just public safety employees to all uh, public employees, and so it it would protect it would protect their certain personal information from disclosure under the Public Records Act, um, not just not just information that is in their personnel file as it's currently written, but right. within any records maintained by the. Um, by their by their employing agency is my All right. understanding. All right, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, Senator Thatcher first, and then Senator Lift come next. Well, okay. So if A5 was adopted, and I I don't think I support that right now. Um, I think it's a discussion we should have some other time. The underlying mm -hmm. bill is good. Um, so information that is out there that also exists in a personnel record, would that have to be then re redacted? Or, I mean, as it's written now, that's personal information that's in this personnel file that would also, you know, like a voter file, for instance, or, um, you know, a number of other public, publicly available databases. Um, uh, Chair Prozonsky, Vice Chair Thatcher, I, I think it would just be it, it'd be records maintained by the employing agency. So if other agencies have your, per, I, if other agencies have that kind of personal records, like your your cell phone number, for instance, I don't think that would be covered under this particular section. I, I'm, I'm sure there are other public records related laws that apply to that, but under this one, it, it just, it just concerns the employing whoever employs that public employee would not be would not have to disclose that information upon request follow-up uh, i was just trying to find the note from the society of professional journalists because uh, they had they brought up some i thought some pretty valid concerns um I, I think the short period in which to be able to react to it is one of them, because when it was given, when it was put up for discussion, they it was about 24 hours before the morning's hearing. Um, and they're pointing out that it would make sweeping changes to a complex area of public records law. That's why I think this is not ready for prime time yet. Um, I think we need to have a larger discussion about it and just pass the underlying bill. All right, yeah, so your conference uh, reference, I just want to put this in perspective, is toward the amendment, the dash five, so it's not Correct. ready for prime time. Correct, okay. yes. Yeah, I just want to make sure our records. Senator Lithicum, next. I, I probably should have uh, butted my way in here earlier because you're having a great conversation, but on my um, OLIS under HB 3307, there are no amendments to display. So I, I can't find the dash five. I've been hunting around um, following the work session link that's in the in the tree doesn't take me to 3047. Uh, yeah, it's 3047, 3047 that we're on. Well, that makes a difference. That is a difference. <laughs> so while you're looking at that, Senator Dimbro, we'll go with you next. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, I'm I'm interested in this amendment, but I'm um, I think I'm in agreement with Senator Thatcher that it may well be a conversation for another day. Um, you know, we heard from the sponsor, Senator Manning, that. Uh, they would like the base bill just to go through. That's that's what all the work has been around. Um, and um, so if if uh, we wanted to move forward uh, without the amendment, I, I would be comfortable with that. All right. 
but so, but I do I do hope we'll come back to this uh, topic in a future session. Yeah, and I, I I follow the track. So Senator Lithicum, if you don't have a question, I'm going to go and make a statement and move forward. Yeah, uh, Knucklehead Lithicum found it and is doing fine. All right, thank you. So this is what I, I I take away from this. I wanted this on the record so we could actually set the record. I'm going to call for the vote as the bill as is, and we're also going to put into our parking lot for the interim work uh, to determine uh, on the dash fives or concepts that um, say relate to the dash five to look at those to see whether or not we need to do something in the future uh, session of uh, coming up 2022. Uh, that I think will give us an opportunity, one, to get the baseline bill passed, to look to see what, if anything, has changed uh, since the original uh, concept was uh, before the previous committee back in 2015. And uh, then we can basically, if we need to expand or clarify the underlying bill, if we do in fact pass it to the floor and it does in fact get passed by the Senate uh, for future uh, uh, discussions. So with that, I'm going to ask Senator Thatcher if you'd be so kind to make a motion on House Bill 3047A. Yes, Mr. Chair, I move House Bill 3047A to the floor with a due pass recommendation. Senator Thatcher moves House Bill 3047A to the floor with a due pass recommendation. Let's go ahead and take the vote, please. Senator Dembro. Senator Dembro votes aye. Senator Gelser. Senator Gelser votes aye. Senator Hurd. Hurd votes no. Senator Linthicum. Linthicum is a protest, no. Senator Manning. Senator Manning votes aye. Vice Chair Thatcher. Thatcher is a civil protest, no. <laughs> Chair Przonski. Uh, Przonski is a civil protest, yes. <laughs> so I will vote aye. Motion does carry. Uh, bill is going to be going to the floor. Senator Manning, I'd like for you to be the carrier of the uh, House Bill 3047A. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With that, we'll close the uh, work session on that bill, and I believe our